If you are trying to start a business and you are in it just for the money, chances are you're not going to be successful. And that's simply based on the fact that nobody wants to give their business to somebody who's money hungry. You might get their initial purchase, but your primary goals are going to be so apparent and nobody is going to come back. And that is not what you want as a business owner. Repeat clients, clients that are loyal to you, customers that are loyal to you, that is the that is the goal of most business owners. They intend, or they should hope to intend, to provide so much value and the best experience to their customers and to their consumers that you have to come back for more because you're not gonna get service like this or a product like this anywhere else. Yes, there might be some things that people sell, like a service, for example, that maybe you only need once, and that's fine. Your referral or word of mouth is probably right up there along with you coming back for another product or service. But if you're only in it for the money, the quality of your product, the quality of your service, your customer support, all of those things are going to be lacking. And that's just simply based on the fact that you have a toxic goal. So today I wanna to talk about how this happens, how consumers are able to sniff this out. And if you are a consumer, and if you are just not really aware of the intentions of the businesses who own the products and services that you purchase or consume, I'm going to teach you how. So let's get into it. Any successful entrepreneur who comes into the business world, who doesn't have rich daddies and mommies who give them a million dollars to start their first business. But that's what rich parents and their cash are for, right? Anybody who enters the business world from scratch as a self-made business owner should be looking to provide immense value. Man, that's easier said than done. Money is always second. Yes, we understand. You want your business to grow. You want to become financially you know, free, you wanna become financially independent, you wanna quit your nine to five and only work for yourself. Yes, the goal is to be financially free, but the only way for you to be financially free is to run a business that's consistent, that's growing. If you try to come into the business world with the goal of just wanting to be rich, you're not going to get anywhere. You will fail and humanity will fall. The reason why I want to talk about this is because so many people come through my doors at Entrepreneur Headquarters seeking a business coach, wanting my advice. 99% of the time they come to me broke, which is fine, right? I'm looking to help you. I'm trying to provide something, anything I can to give you an idea of where to start. But the problem is they come to me, clients, we'll call them they, people come to me and they say, I have no money, but I wanna make a ton of money. And I'm like, you are in the wrong place. I am not here to teach you how to get rich, rich quick. One, because there's no fucking such thing. There's no such thing. I'm not running a get rich quick scheme. This isn't a pyramid scheme. Two, you have to be able to put in the work. So not only do people come to me with the only intention, with their only intention being to make money, the second thing is they don't have time. No matter what, it's they don't have time. And I'm like, so you wanna make a ton of money, you don't wanna do a lot of work, and you have nothing to offer. I got nothing. The fuck you want me to do for you, right? Now, it's the people who come through my door who say, I see a problem, I wanna fix that problem. Because there are people out there that are just like me who had this problem, and I don't think they know how to fix it. And those people sometimes come to me with that goal, and sometimes they need help finding funding, other times they have the funding, but they want to make sure they do things the right way. Those are the people that are going to be successful entrepreneurs. You have to provide a service in some way, whether you're solving a pain point of a particular group of people, or you're looking to grow a business to create jobs for others, right? Maybe you're a construction worker and you want to start a construction company in the hopes that you can hire a team of really awesome construction workers and laborers, masons, whatever, you know, then provide an awesome service to your clients. And that's fine too. But if your only goal is to make money, you are not going to get anywhere. Now that that's being, now that I've said all of that, <laughs> the next piece that you have to consider 
if you're looking to start a business is first the business idea. What is your great idea, right? You wanna solve a problem, you wanna be a service to others, through what? Do you have a skill set? Do you have an idea for a product? Do you see a vacancy in an industry that you can fill? Meaning, do you see that most rural places don't have access to something, right? And maybe you want to start to create, you wanna create access to a certain commodity or good, right? Maybe rural areas don't have access to, I don't freaking know, sprouts, whole foods. I don't just, I don't know fucking know. If you see a problem, you see a pain point that people are having, you maybe are at one point were one of those people and you're frustrated because there is no solution. So you wanna create the solution. That's one thing. And I'll give you an example. When I started Entrepreneur Headquarters, it was because I had been a business coach for like unofficially for a few years because I had been a successful business owner and people were constantly coming to me for advice. And then they were telling their friends and their friends were coming to me for advice. And before I knew it, I was just spending hours a week helping people with their business. And I'm like, I should just turn this into a fucking business and make money from this because I'm clearly doing a really good job and it would give me the ability to help more than just friends and friends of friends. I can spread the word and maybe help other people be successful too because me kind of like unofficially being a coach for people, for friends and friends of friends, and that led to their success. And I'm like, okay, maybe I do have a knack for this, right? Maybe I just wasn't lucky the few businesses that I started, the six businesses that I started. Maybe I'll start a seventh business and show people how to do this. So that's what I did. And it was because I had a talent, there wasn't really any business coaches out there who were helping you know, people start from scratch. And if they were, they were charging an astronomical price. And I didn't wanna do that. I wanted to help people at an affordable rate, get them going. And if they became successful, which I know they would be, then they can hire me to be their one-on-one -on -one coach, right? Cause that was like my high ticket thing. So the first thing is, your idea. And you maybe you have multiple ideas. I also have tons of people that come to me and they're like, I want to start a business and I want to do this and this and this and this. And I'm like, pick one, <laughs> pick one thing, right? I understand you want your business to grow and you want to offer all of these things, but you got to pick one. I was talking to a client who wants to start a security company. He has a really good opportunity to, you know, provide armed guards and have contracts for armed guards. But he also wants to be a firearms instructor and he wants to do risk assessments and vulnerability assessments. And I'm like, who is doing all of those things? Is it you? How are you doing all of those things? Do you have the talent already that can provide those services? And it's no. So then guess what? You can't provide those services. What is the thing that you can provide right now? And can you afford to provide that right now? If you can't, what are your plans for getting funding, right? Those are the questions that I generally ask when people have a million different things that they wanna do for their business. Or they have a million different business ideas and they're not even related. I'm just like, you need to pick one. I had somebody else come up to me, he wanted to start a car detailing business and that included paint correction, but then he also wanted to be a tutor because his background was in education. And I'm like, those are two very awesome things. You're one person though. And if an auto detail with paint correction is, is taking up six to eight hours of your day, do you have time to be a full-time tutor? Like you need to ask yourself these questions. So that's business idea. The next thing is you wanna validate your business idea. So you write down all the ideas that you have and then you're gonna go and do your research. And this kind of bleeds into what's called market research. And you wanna see, is there space for your business out there? Maybe you can't find a microfiber cloth that works in the way you want it to work. So you do some research. Are there Reddit posts? Are there Google reviews? Are there any, is there anything else out there for other products or other services that people were not happy with? Or maybe you are a car detailer and you look up other car detailing businesses to find out what people were having issues with. Now this is an example I use a lot. And let's say you wanted to open up a pet store and I told you, or you remember hearing, okay, Jesse said to pick one thing. So I'm only gonna pick dog bowls. And you look up the reviews of other dog bowls and you see that plastic dog bowls people didn't like because the plastic degraded. Stainless steel or metal dog bowls would rust or they weren't good outside. And you can see what people's pain points are. And you're like, okay, is there a product that exists that can answer these problems? There is, there is a product that exists. Is it reasonable? Like, can I afford to buy the inventory for that product? or can I afford with my time to provide that service to people who have this problem? If the answer is yes, then you have a good business idea and you're gonna do that for every idea that you write down. And eventually 
you're going to narrow it down. And sometimes you might narrow it down by what's the most lucrative. Cool. Now you have a valid business idea. You've done some market research. You found that there's room for you in, that, in the market, in the industry. The next thing you want to do, and I always recommend that people start a business plan. And even if it's this is just like a side gig, that's totally fine. But I do recommend that you at least start, take a stab at a business plan because doing that and having a business plan is going to make you think about things you might not otherwise be thinking about. The Small Business Association has great business plan templates. Canva has a couple. I'm not really a big fan of the business plan templates on Canva. So you can take the information from the SBA templates and then make it look pretty in Canva if you want but they're the most comprehensive. And if you do that, and if you put in the legwork and you are proud of the business that you're creating because it's providing a service, it's answering a question, you're being a service to others in some capacity, then you will be successful. Now, there's a lot more to starting a business, but that is how you should get started. If you try to start your business in any other way, you know, maybe you're just trying to find the next the next best thing that's making that's making money, it's going to be short-lived. You're never going to reach financial freedom. You're never going to understand true wealth. And people are going to see right fucking through that. And if you're not sure if people are going to see right through that, I'm going to tell people right now how to see through that. If you're a consumer or if you're a business owner doing your market research, some of the ways that you can tell someone is just in, in it to make the money is a few different things. Now, I will say this. It's going to be a bit of an assumption. Maybe they're just really bad at business or maybe they let their business lapse because they're lazy. Like maybe there's some other reason other than them being money hungry, but a clear indication that there is at least some problem with the business or some problem with the mission of the business is one, customers have the same problem over a long period of time. So maybe someone in May complains about customer service or long shipping times. And then by December, people are still complaining about shipping issues and the owner hasn't updated or commented on these posts saying, hey, listen, I'm sorry, we were having some issues with manufacturing, we're gonna get this to you right away, or here's a 20% off coupon. If, if you don't see that the problem was at least addressed by the business owner, that's one clear indication that they're just in it for the money or they're a foreign company and they just don't give a fuck. The second clear indication is if you do purchase something from that business and it fucking sucks, the service sucks or the product itself sucks and you go back and you tell them and you hear diddly squat. By the way, when I say squat, I mean diddly squat. Chances are that it's because they don't give a fuck. You already paid them. They don't care, right? If there's no resolution or if they say, hey, listen, sorry, it sucks. There's no refunds. Okay. Like they don't even try to fix it or talk to you a little bit about it. They're just in it for the money, right? Anybody who's in business to be in business for the right reasons cares about the reputation of their business and is going to want to make things right. Unless you're just a dick. You as the customer are a dick and they've really exhausted all efforts and now they're just like, listen, I can't help you. That's a different story. But at the end of the day, those are kind of the ways that people can tell that the company's a piece of shit, like, or the owner's a piece of shit. So if you're looking to start a business, don't be that guy. Nobody likes that guy. Don't be that guy. So that's all I have for you guys today. Quick little tip on starting a business and starting a business for the right reasons. I talk to people all of the fucking time about business, about their business, about starting a business. And a lot of the people who come to me are just looking to make money. And what do I tell them? I tell them I can't fucking help you. If you want to learn how to start a business, you can sign up for my course, you can buy my book, but I am not going to take my time, my precious time, my precious. to sit down and talk to you about how to start a successful business because you don't fucking care. You just want to make money and therefore it is a waste of time for me and my time is valuable. With that, I'll see you guys on the flip side.